big elements of the set are, first and foremost, a forest, which is going to be made up of real trees that are being felled kindly, especially for us, um, from white and woods. We've also got a collapsed house right at the heart of the set, which has got um, a room inside, which is very crucial to the story. We then have a huge, luminescent orange cross clad with LEDs. And then on top of that, we're also building the flats for the four stage, and also cladding and painting the whole stage to make it look like poured concrete. So yes, it's a huge amount of work. So basically the set is uh, split into kind of two redefined areas. We conveyed the idea of an anonymous totalitarian state by creating a space here which is kind of out of time, out of space. It's kind of representative or evocative of many different eras or nations. There's very little detail that gives it away, so you kind of lose yourself in the idea that you could be losing yourself at the heart of this system which cares little for your identity. But behind a gauze um, on the main stage is like a kind of like fantasy environment um, where there's a forest. <laughs> so the storytelling idea is conveyed by having a sense of huge depth here and that's helped by using what's called a gauze and a cyclorama at the back which we call a psych and this has a big dark blue colour on it which is going to help this sense that when you look beyond the four stage which is where the interrogation cell is you're seeing back into a receding distance and regarding like the story world action takes place within this like uh, really vivid um, environment we also have a lot of haze and incredible lighting going on to play that up me and Joel and Tom have been kind of really furiously talking about how the play can visually explode, like expand and fill like a greater environment literally in the way that it does like in the text. Our set design for the Pillow Moon is actually really unusual compared to other productions. Typically if you look at um, photos of productions in the past, especially its premiere, it's gone for a single cell room, some tables, a chair, dark atmosphere. It's quite often staged is that it never really manages to make it out of the interrogation environment. It never, it's kind of imprisoned within, the, the play becomes imprisoned within the interrogation environment. We decided that we would take it one step further and we would blast open the confines of that interrogation room and offer you the storytelling world in full, vivid, multi colour. We wanted it to have somewhere huge and exciting and visually rich to go. Um, because the stories are so rich and so generous. To do that, we've been working very closely um, with the director, so there's been a sort of core team of us, and actually the set design as a result has found itself really tying into the interpretation of the play as a whole in ways that it wouldn't normally in other productions. The trees are being felled on Friday of this week and we're then being helped out by a very kind gardener called Dan, who's going to be driving them down on his trailer and we'll then be carrying them in pulling them upright and then fixing them to what's called the grid, which is at the top of the theatre space. We've got eight metre trees that have to come straight into the playhouse because we can't store them anywhere, so they have to literally come off the back of a trailer and go straight into the space. Um, so I think that'll be quite a priority. So we've been working in consultation with professional staff at the playhouse who have been teaching us how to build these things, especially the flats, and more complicated technical bits. I mean, like everything in terms of like the build, apart from um, like Zeb and James uh, and the OP staff are students, so we're all students, um, and like we've got a lovely group of helpers who are coming in to like as a workforce who are all students. A lot of it we were prepared for, but we have been learning a huge amount of different skills as well. Mainly because when you build a theatre, you actually only have to build thinking about one direction. It only matters what people see from the front. You don't have to worry about what's behind. Model box is like an unbelievably important thing. Like I had never, I'd never done a set big enough to kind of warrant it. It resolves so many problems for you. Um, but then from there, the idea is that you put together a set of build plans, which are like unbelievably specific, not just like a sketch of what it should look like, like really, really specific. Um, and those go, go to the playhouse, they kind of get checked with the stuff here. And once they're happy, and then you, you get on with it. One of the biggest set pieces that we're building is um, the three and a half metre figure of the Pillow Man, um, which uh, actually only has the shortest stage time. The synonymous character, the Pillow Man himself, appears lurking in haze and blasting bright light. To achieve that, we needed to create a Pillow Man who truly was massive, was dominating the space, was terrifying, but at the same time 
as the character himself suggests, friendly, welcoming, Disney-esque in character. So we actually uh, were in Wix buying up materials for this and um, one of our other brilliant helpers, Gemma, spotted something called Spaceboard. Now, Spaceboard is incredible. It is lightweight but very strong. It's sort of big pink insulation foam and this allowed us to make the whole skeleton very strong, very big, but weigh nearly nothing at the same time. Regarding the build, um, there's a lot of painting to do, um, but really it's finishing those really, really big set pieces and then where things look too, oh yeah, we've just made this, where they look too fresh, um, where, where rendering is or isn't working. It's like having that time at the end to like step away. Um, as an actor, um, we haven't yet synthesised um, the story scenes with the interrogation scenes. Um, and even though there's sort of not, not that we're ever, <laughs> we've become involved in them, but it will be, I think, a really exciting step up to see the whole work. Because we've seen some of the work, but we've never had like a complete run um, involving uh, like the physical stuff in the story. Um, so that's exciting and will happen really soon.